In May of 2007, my colleague Richard Bernay, maker of high-grade classical flamenco guitars, classical guitar historian extraordinaire, he uh, did this uh, translation of the last known interview by Santos Hernandez, the great guitar maker, disciple of Manuel Ramirez, having started off with Valentin Viudas and Rafael Ortega before working in the Ramirez shop. I've known Richard since 1987 to talk with on the phone. I met him twice in person. Great people. So he says, an interview with the best guitar maker in the world, Santos Hernandez is considered by many authorities to be the greatest guitar maker of the 20th century. As foreman in the old Mamo Ramirez shop, he made the famous 1912 Mamo Ramirez, played for so many years by Andre Segovia. Hernandez's guitars were the most recorded instruments of the first half of the 20th century. Ten years before he put this in Vintage Guitar Magazine, I had written an article who was the most widely recorded guitar maker before World War II. That was back in September of 1997 on my Desde el Escritorio de Randy Osborne uh, page from the desk of Randy Osborne. Continuing, including the premiere recording of Rodrigo's Concerto de Aranjuez, it was Hernandez who made the incredible double body guitar profile in this column in February of 2007. It was Hernandez who enjoyed the patronage of virtually all the greatest players of the early 20th century. Santos is the bridge between the pioneering work of Antonio de Torres and the modern era. Despite his seminal position in the world of guitar making, Santos was extremely secretive and there exist only two known articles in which he discusses his art. This one having been virtually unknown till recently when I discovered it at a Sevilla book dealer who specialized in old newspaper editions. This article by Alfonso de la Serna was buried in the January 30th, 1943 edition of El Español. I have translated this faithfully as possible and without adding editorial or explanatory remarks. Santos died March 8, 1943, a few months after the publication of this article. Edwana Street is like a municipal tributary on one side of the wide and flowing river of Akala Street, a few meters away, a bankrupt skyscraper among the thundering city bustle. But here is kept an improbable peace as if we had stepped into a bygone era. Beyond the office buildings is a certain green door. It is the entrance to the workshop of an ancient Madrid artisan, Santa Hernandez, the best guitar maker in the world. Gold worker, apprentice, and master. I was a gold worker, Santo says, one who made the silver and gold lame borders for the suits of bullfighters. This I did for many years. I was 12 years old. Now I'm 68. I was born here and lived here all my life. I never left this blessed land. It was in the year 1886 when I changed my profession. A relative of mine, a master guitar maker, Viudas, took me with him to teach me the trade. We worked at the Cava Baja, number 10 street, in the number 24 of the same street. Manuel Ramirez had his shop and later my true was later my true teacher. Two years with Viudas, not very good ones. Later with Ortega, Rafael Ortega. He was a guitar maker from Granada, working at Cadiz Street in 1898. Next came the disaster of Cuba and the Philippines, the Spanish-American War, which coincided with my military service. No, I didn't go abroad but I was in Africa and my service lasted five years. I returned. Mamo Ramirez, one of the major maestros of his times, had heard of me, knowing that I had completed my military service, sought me out to have me work for him. We were together for 22 years. He died in 1916. 
Two years later, I established my own shop. I've been established only 24 years. Life is short. Yes, I had some young disciples, but they left. I understand they want to make money. No, I don't think any Cremona school will come from here. Santos Sanandes evokes these memories leaning on the display cabinet, display counter of his shop. On the wall behind him are a mountain of photographs nailed randomly on the wall. Among them are the major Spanish and foreign guitarists. All of them have in their hands Santos guitars. We get closer to see that this modest artist wishes to tell us. To, we get closer to see what this modest artist wishes to tell us. At the foot of each photo is a dedication to Santos Hernandez, the best guitar maker in the world to the Spanish Stradivarius. Santos, who never left Madrid after his military service as a youth, has carried his name to Buenos Aires, London, Vienna, and Paris. Yes, I've made many guitars, but not so many that I can't remember each one. I've made them for Regino Sainz de la Maza, Andre Segovia, Daniel Fortea, Francisco Alfonso, Rosario, Guidobro, Luis Sanchez, Silverio, Raineri. Raineri was a mandolin and guitarist. Uh, performer and teacher wrote method books for the mandolin. Luis Walker and so many others. I am a luthier, but I don't make violins because a new violin, no matter how perfect it might be, is rough and hard, and always they prefer the antique ones. When I was a little boy, I didn't want to be just anybody. I wanted to be somebody. I wanted to rise up and distinguish myself. I decided to work with an instrument that I could perfect, something where I could leave my own fingerprint in the art. I picked the guitar, so Spanish with the ambition that someday my guitars would carry my name as if they were an Amati or a Guanarius, but with modesty, of course. And that's how it is, dear reader, that Santos Fernandez became a master guitar maker equal to those ancient luthiers that made violins, lutes for the troubadours, entertaining the courts of Provence in France and of Spain, Italy and Sahona with the sweet verses of Planchon intoned in Tuscan, uh, Catalan or ancient languages. The Tuscan dialect is the uh, dialect of Italy that all the other dialects uh, became uh, dependent on so that everybody could understand Italian. That didn't happen until after uh, the 1860 uh, coalition of all the uh, nation states in Italy. How does one build a guitar? The workshop of Santos is very small. On tables and ca display cabinets are instruments awaiting repair, molds, gouges, strings, woods, hang from a wire close to the ceiling, leaves of delicate sets of wood set to dry. To the side, an Italian mandolin, very old and unstrung, given by Santos, uh, given to Santos by an English painter. We quickly and directly asked Santos this, how do you make a guitar? And Santos very kindly tried to explain it to us. The woods. <clears throat> Fundamentally, we employ two types of woods, northern woods and tropical woods. From Germany and in Bohemia, we get the first kind. From South America, the second. Yes, they always come from outside of Spain. There are special suppliers dedicated to cutting and preparing musical instrument making woods. They send salesmen frequently with shipments of materials who act as intermediaries between the suppliers and we guitar makers. Santos continues describing the parts of the guitar, and that way we know that the spruce is used for the soundboard. Spruce from the black forest, a resonant elastic wood with smoky clouds of rain, smelling of turpentine. It is the most delicate wood, says the maestro, and where all the sound of the instrument resides, since ancient times this has been the material used for soundboards. Of rosewood, the 
Linum Vitae with a brownish heart. One makes the sides and back. Of ebony, the hardest and darkest wood brought from the tropics, the fingerboard. Of cedar, noble and long-lived, the neck. We also use cypress. Did you know the Temple of Solomon and Noah's Ark were made of cypress? And flame maple, a vigorous and brilliant material, very polishable, resistant to dry rot. Now the assembly of the parts. All of these woods, once cut, have to be dried six or eight years, explained Santos, until all the humidity contained in them is expelled. Next, we assemble the pieces. There are different methods to assemble a guitar. Here I have a mold for one. It's called a solera, but I don't know why. We think perhaps it is because from the solera is the foundation for the creation of all the guitars. Always the same, like the mother of the wine or the interior of an oven. First I assemble the neck, next the back and sides, and finally the soundboard. This is the most important operation, and one has to give it all the science one possesses regarding the thickness of the materials used. This is determined by their flexibility and stiffness. There is a established principle that this varies between two and two and a half millimeters, but actually it is by feel we determine this. I've always said the Spaniards were given the fingers by God to know too thick, too thin, where to stop doing uh, trimming. I feel the wood and the flex it between my hands and that's how I determine the thickness. In addition, I take into account the strings which will be used, the climate in which the instrument will reside, and the hands of the player. None of this can be taught theoretically only with experience. But this is very dangerous, for once the instrument is assembled, you can't change anything, and a small error of judgment will ruin the instrument. If the material is very thin, continues Santos, the sound will be very good in the beginning, but later will deteriorate because the sets of wood suffer distortion and the sound loses quality. On the other hand, if the wood is too thick in the beginning, there will be very little sound, but eventually it po it's possible it might improve. The strings, the best strings are German. The first, second, and third are made of Spanish uh, sheep gut. The manufacturing process is the following. The intestines are cleaned with a special lye solution and cut into threads. Six or eight are used for the first. These are braided together. Finally, they are polished, polished with pumice stone. The quality depends on cutting equal threads. The more care taken in the manufacturer, the better they will sing. The paste strings are made from the silver wire wound around a twisted core of very fine silk threads. But you have to know how to graduate the sizes because the silk is very delicate and breaks easily. And if it is too thick, produces muffled notes. It's strange, finishes Santos, but in Germany, where they don't know anything about flamenco, they make the best basses for accompanying flamenco singers. Pages, Torres, Pujol, and the Biwela. Santos Hernandez speaks to us about Pages, an 18th century guitar maker, the best of his era. Reino Sainz de la Maza has a guitar of his while at which Santos is repairing. He also remembers Torres, who in the 19th century was the true modernizer of the modern guitar, the one who gave it its final form. We ask him about the Biwela, and Santos responds, I think this is nothing more than the ancient memory. Actually, I hadn't heard of it until recently. Pujol, the Catalan guitarist, found a Biwela in a French museum and ordered from London copies of one he found. He plays it with an accompaniment, and it's rather poor. Uh, Miguel Simplicio made one for uh, Pujol in the mid-1930s. Uh, the guitar, on the other hand, he says with enthusiasm, is a magnificent instrument. It has presence, a power to project that has been given to it today. In the olden days, the guitar was not much played, nor did Tyraga play much in public, but in private gatherings, and it seems to me that it was your bet 
who was the first to give a public concert. I remember the place, the Commedia, La Commedia uh, Theater, in the year 1902. Today, Santos, uh, today, Sanz de la Maza and Segovia have universal fame. This never could have been had they played the Biwela. In the middle of our conversation, several gentlemen enter through the shop door carrying violin cases under their arms. Not knowing the value of such instruments, they inquire to Santos if he would examine and evaluate their instruments. Santos takes a violin in hand. After several seconds, he finishes expert, his expert examination. His pronouncement, a French manufacturer, 40 years old. Inside the body, there is a label that reads Amadi Cremona. The owner, indignant with such a sacrilege, exclaims, It's as if they are bleeding the wood. The other instrument, fairly good, but of modern German manufacturer, has a label that says Stradivarius. Final, final. It's been three hours since we opened the door to his shop, and Santos Hernandez gives us some final words. I learned nothing from books. Everything was taught to me by my maestros and my own experience. I think in my art, this is the way it has to be. Some time ago, the firm of Hill in London, who are world famous makers of instruments, published a book documenting and detailing the technical, constructual details of Stradivari violins. Look, the firm of Hill had all the technical measurements at their disposal and in addition had or thought they had the secret of Stradivarius, but they never were able to make a violin the equal to those of this Cremona, Cremonese master. I'm just a poor crazy man in love with my art. Every guitar that leaves my hands is like a daughter of my own creation. The least important thing to me is the money they bring in. If that was the case, I would prefer uh, to have set up a factory production like they do in America. But I prefer to be an artist, not an industrialist. I don't recommend this for anyone who aspires to the good life, because while you may leave your name from a practical standpoint, you will have chosen the wrong path. Of course, I'm happy to have chosen the wrong path. These are the final words of Santos Hernandez, the best guitar maker in the world who leaves behind neither successors nor school because there are very few people in this world that have what can be called love of the art. He loves his work like an artist as they are his. The beautiful and noble truth is to take in the hands of his guitar made of precious woods, mother of pearl, wood, meat, silk and silver. And the beauty of is the music that emanates from this guitar. We think that the fatherly love felt by this maestro for his work will certainly never be fully appreciated. Mr. Ford, with your machines. 30 years ago, I had three Santos flamencos in stock all at the same time. 25 years ago, I sold a great 1933 Santos classical that belonged to Abel Calavaro. He used it to record in the 1950s, made a LP, a long play disc, and he sounded just like Segovia on both sides. He had studied with Segovia from 1935 to 1944, and that particular uh, record won the Disc Critics Award in 1958. It was written up in the uh, 1958 The Guitar Review magazine published in New York. Uh, 